Hi, my name is Tim O'Connor. I'm a data scientist here at Wayfair, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit today on experimentation. So experiments are really important for, for all the tech companies. It could be the case that you want to test out you know, two different versions of a given model to see which one's better, or you might want to uh, generate new sorts of data that your historical data would just you know, not have whatsoever. So one main way that a lot of people will run experiments are through A-B tests. And it's really simple. You just take your population of customers and then you can split them into two homogeneous groups. And so the idea is that you show your two different groups two slightly different things. So in your A group, that could be the next possible iteration of one of your models for, let's say, product recommendations. And then in your B group or your control group, that can be your, your, your current model. And so you're testing out whether or not your, your new model is actually outperforming the model that currently exists. And one thing that's really nice about A-B tests is that they're happening at the same time. And so since they're happening at the same time, you don't really have to worry too much about confounding variables because they're going to be having an equal effect on both of the groups. And so then that allows you to be able to see like the distribution of your outcome variable of interest. Let's say it's the click-through rates. Uh, and then you can compare these two distributions, see if they're statistically different, and then be able to assess which version is better. So in this case, the model A is outperforming uh, model B, so therefore we, we would want to run with model A in the future. But there's market downside of doing A-B tests because it requires you to be able to show your two different groups two different things. The product that I'm focused on at Wayfair is identifying substitutable product groups, which is combing through the 15 million different products that we sell and trying to group together products that customers view as substitutes. And when I say substitutes, I mean that if you change the, the prices for some of the goods in the group, that the other groups, the, the demand would, would increase or decrease depending on that price action. So since we don't ever want to show two different customers or two different groups, two different prices, we have to think about how we can experiment in a non-AB environment. So the idea is that, let's say that we just take a group of products, and they can be really just any products. They can be sofas, armchairs, even bare ottomans, and you split them into a treatment group and a control group. And you have some sort of price change on your treatment group, and you're trying to see whether or not the demand or the orders in your control group was affected by this treatment effect. Visualizing this, we can just plot out our order series over time. So these are our orders for our control and treatment groups. Let's say they look something like this in our pre-experiment little period. And then afterwards, we might have some you know, uh, rise in our control group. And we might have some, some decrease in our treatment group if there was a positive price change. At first glance, you might say, oh, well, yeah, comparing to the week before, the control group definitely increased, and comparing to the week before, the treatment group definitely decreased. And so you might want to say that, oh, yes, these are our substitutable products. But this leaves out a lot of information. It leaves out a lot of information about some of the confounding variables. One thing that could be explaining this is let's say that this experimental period uh, includes Way Day, which is one of our largest sales of the year on Wayfair.com. Then we might want to employ what call, what's called synthetic controls. And so synthetic controls are, are simply just other groups of products that are going to be correlating with the, your series of interests, let's say your control group, and then you can just draw these random groups from the rest of your uh, sofas, armchairs, or bare ottomans. So you just populate a lot of random synthetic controls, and then you can plot them. Let's say that these are your synthetic controls for your control group, and if this was the week that included Way Day, oh, then you would probably have an increase in your synthetic controls as well. And then if you compare the difference in the pre-experimental period with the difference 
at the, the end or throughout the experimental period, then he would be able to correctly see that, oh, well actually no, the control group didn't actually gain any orders. It was just a highly seasonal time where there was a lot of orders coming in for those, all of those bear Ottomans uh, in general. And so then he would reject the fact that this is a substitutable product group. And one really nice thing about Wafer is that we have so many products, we have 15 million products, and so you can just create as many synthetic control groups as, as you want. So yeah, thanks for listening today. Check back soon to see uh, about more projects that we're working on at the data science group at Wayfair.